Sarah? Hey, Phil. Back oh. here. Hey. hey, Sarah. Sarah from Mad Science. Great oh, to see you. Thank you. Great to be here. I like your lab coat. It's a really nice color. <laughs> Wait a minute. It's supposed to be yellow. It must have changed to orange in the portal. That's OK, because I, this is not the first time that's happened, so I've installed a little uh, secret thing on the app that allowed me to get a new one from storage. Oh, Watch perfect. this. Huh. Didn't work. Oh, well, I'll get another one later. All right. <laughs> anyway, we are going to max out the geodesic dome. Amazing. That's so cool. Yeah, so we just want to make it bigger. So how do we do okay. that? OK, well, there's a couple ways we could do that. Um, we could add a few more points of connection, change the shape of it, make mm -hmm. it a little more complex so it's a little bit bigger. Mm. Or we can use the design right now and use different materials to make it bigger. Ah, OK. Well, you know what? I think we should do both of those things. Okay. I think we should make it more complex and bigger. But why don't we start with bigger? Okay. But we'll use the simple, the simple design right here, and we'll just get like long wooden poles instead of toothpicks. Perfect. Yeah. And then, um, what will we use for the gumdrop? I guess we can't get big gumdrops, huh? No, I don't think so. Um, what about um, oranges? Huh? Ah, yeah, oranges could work. Maybe, yeah, because yeah. you could stick the poles in and then the oranges would be, okay. Yeah. We'll go to the Science Max fruit market and we'll get some oranges. Perfect. And I'll get a yellow lab coat. I don't know why that didn't work. Is this a maxed out number of oranges? I think so. It's, or is it just a medium doubt number? We don't really need many <laughs> more oranges than this. No. So, uh, there we go. So we got our oranges. Those are going to be our gumdrops and these wooden dowels will be our toothpicks. We just have to start with a pentagon, right? Yes. Five sides. So why don't we just lay that out and see what Perfect. it looks like here. We start building this dome the same as the gumdrop dome. So, like this. We stick the dowels into the oranges to make our five-sided pentagon. Good. Like that. And then we go up from there by making a few triangles and sticking the oranges on the tops. Oh. But because the oranges are heavy, the triangles are pretty wobbly. That is, until we get them all connected with cross pieces. Yeah. After that, it seems to hold up pretty well. Okay, let's see if it holds it up. Whoa! <laughs> That's exciting. That is very exciting. Uh, let's do the same thing. So you make a triangle here, I'll make a triangle there, okay. and then we'll connect them. Sounds good. Two layers, orange dome. I'm pretty excited about this. This is nice. Yeah. I'm surprised that the oranges actually hold it together because mm -hmm. oranges aren't really that strong. No, exactly. But the structure itself is really strong based on the design of it. Yeah, because it's it's all about the shapes, right? Exactly. And we're using lots of triangles today, which are one of the strongest shapes on Earth. Ooh, strong. Well, then making something out of a lot of triangles makes it really strong. Exactly. Yeah. OK, so let's make that top layer of right. things. We only need one more orange. Yeah. This will be the one, top layer. Right in the middle. One orange on top with five dowels from each point and... Yeah! So <laughs> orange juice high five. In fact, it worked so well, there's only one thing left to do. Hmm, is there a way that we can maybe max it out even more? Watermelon? Watermelon. watermelon. We yeah. could get the round watermelons. Have you yeah. ever seen those? They're like the size of a bowling ball or yeah. smaller, a little bit smaller? That's perfect. And they're nice and full inside, so they should be able to hold the uh, posts into place. OK, we'll try it one more time with watermelon. Inside dome, high five. Yeah! Come on down to Sal's Science Shop and see me, Sal, while you shop for science. This week only, Sal's one of a kind, once a year polymer sale. 50 to 75 percent off. Anything made of polymers. Rubber? That's a polymer. Polystyrene. When you're eating your next meal, I recommend some polypropylene. Low density polyethylene. High density polyethylene. You want some polytetrafluoroethylene? We got it. We've even got polychlorotrifluoroethylene. Do they even know how good a deal this is? Because you're not gonna find you're not gonna find that kind of deal just like every day. But hold the phone. Polymers aren't just plastics. Rayon, nylon, Teflon, you name the lawn, we got it on. Sale. What do we want? Polymers! When do we want them? Anytime during normal business hours! Wool, silk, even cotton! Polymers, polymers, polymers! Polymers, polymers, polymers! Word has lost all meaning. Glue, paint, umbrella fabric, oh yeah! Carpet, you bet that's on sale. Roberta, I'm running out of sale signs! Buy it, and I'll put it in a plastic bag, also made of polymers. Seriously, Roberta, we can't have a sale on everything. Oh, hey, hey, even you, even me, the proteins in our bodies, even 
even our DNA all polymers. <laughs> so come on down to Sal's Science Shop and get a great deal on your polymers for a limited time. I mean, it'd have to be a limited time, right, Roberta? Because, I mean, I can't discount everything in the store to 75% off. How am I going to make any money? I mean, are we still rolling? One hundred different kinds of slime. Yes, it's gonna be so much fun, but we're not gonna make a hundred today. Yeah, I know. We're just gonna do our top favorites. Yeah, it's gonna be super great. All right, what are we starting with? So our first slime we're starting with today is some really cool molding slime. Now this slime, actually, if you leave it out overnight, it'll harden, and you can make an imprint of whatever you like. So here we made an imprint of our little uh, tool there. So we're gonna look at a little bit more liquidy slime, starting with this one over here, which I believe you already know about. This is cornstarch mud. Exactly. You hold this. Sounds good. I'm gonna good. hold this and we're gonna try pouring it. Oh, oh, Whoa. so. See, it's like, it's like a liquid, but then if you do it fast, it's like a solid. All right, what's next? Over here, we have some other really awesome types of slime. So right over here, we have some crunchy slime. Crunchy slime? Exactly. Why is it crunchy? Now, it's crunchy because we've actually added a few beads inside of it to make it crunchy. Uh. This is some really cool, awesome slime. Here, you take half. And you can feel the beads as you get to stretch it out. It's so cool. This is uh, this one is a little harder to clean. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> I'll just do that. All right, so what's next? So next we have some really cool glow-in-the-dark slime. Glow-in-the-dark slime? Yeah, it's so awesome. Ooh, look at how much it glows. That glows a lot. That's super glowy slime. So to do the different kinds of slime, we need the polymer. Yes. And then the thing that sticks the polymers together. Exactly. So the glue is the polymer. Glue is the polymer. And the starch is the thing that bonds it. Yes. Uh-huh. Very cool. And then you put the thing in that makes it the, the kind of slime. Yes, right before you add the bonding component, because if we keep uh, adding stuff after it's already made, it unfortunately won't be able to take it. So we add our powder before we add our starch in this situation. Uh, should we go on to the next thing? <laughs> yeah, let's move on to more slime. slime. This is a light stick. It creates light using a chemical reaction. There's a liquid chemical inside and also a glass container that holds another chemical. When you bend the light stick, you break open the container and the two chemicals mix, creating light. There you go, light sticks, chemical reaction. And yes, of course we're gonna max it out. This is a whole bunch of the two chemicals in a light stick. Let's max it out. So how does a chemical reaction produce light? Well, a lot of chemical reactions produce energy. You might think of a chemical reaction producing heat. Well, heat is a kind of energy. This chemical reaction also produces energy, just energy in the form of light. It's just a different kind of energy. Whoa, Max out light stick! <laughs> and now for a Science Max quiz. Chemical change or not? What's a chemical change? Well, let's demonstrate. Look at this. It's a happy little molecule of iron. And here's another molecule of oxygen. If they were to have a chemical change, they would react and form different molecules. Look, it's a molecule of rust. Rust is a different chemical than either iron or oxygen. It's a chemical change. Now, if these molecules mixed and did not change, then it's not a chemical change, it's a physical change. Sometimes it's hard to tell if it's a chemical change just by looking, but asking what kind of change it is leads to good science. So let's look at some examples. Vinegar and baking soda. Is it a chemical change? Yes. Vinegar and baking soda react to form different chemicals. Sodium acetate, that's the white stuff that's left over, and carbon dioxide, which makes the bubbles. How about a nucleation fountain with Diet Cola and mints? Haha! -ha, a lot of people think that's a chemical change, but it's not. The mints cause carbonation, the bubbles, to escape faster. But in the end, you still have cola and mints, no new chemicals. And without the carbonation, nothing happens. So, it's a physical change. Take a guess at this one. Glow stick chemicals. Well, producing light or heat is usually a sign of a chemical change. How about mixing sugar and water to make a sugar pop? That's a physical change. You start with sugar and water, you mix them, and when you have a sugar pop, what chemicals are you left with? Well, sugar and water. So, no chemical change. 
it can be hard to tell sometimes. But whenever two things mix, think to yourself if it's a chemical change or a physical change. And now you know it's either one or the other. And that's the first step to good science. Thanks for playing our Science Max quiz. You know about helium balloons, right? Helium is a harmless gas that is less dense than air, which is why helium floats. If I was to breathe some helium, my voice sounds higher because helium is less dense than normal air, so my vocal cords vibrate faster. Ah! Uh... But have you ever wondered, is there a gas that's more dense than air? There is. It's called sulfur hexafluoride, and it's much more dense than air, so if I was to breathe some, my vocal cords would vibrate slower, making my voice lower. Ha 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 ha! This container is full of sulfur hexafluoride. Ooh, I know, it's invisible, you can't see anything, but watch as I blow some bubbles. The bubbles are floating on top of that layer of sulfur hexafluoride. The bubbles float because they're full of regular air, which is less dense than the sulfur hexafluoride. In fact, a balloon will float on this as well. The balloon floats lower because the weight of the latex also drags it down a bit. But the bubbles and the balloons are floating on a sea of sulfur hexafluoride. And it is like a sea because it's a fluid just like water, but it's more dense than regular air. Science! <laughs> That's awesome!